Welcome back to the Teach Me CQL series. This series is presented by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. It is intended to support healthcare quality leaders, health IT vendors, and measure developers understand the use of clinical quality language, or CQL. Today's video short will focus on operator precedence in CQL expressions. Taking a step back to the days when many of us were learning math, you likely remember learning about PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, as many of us were told. To give an example, let's remember that the equation on the left is not equal to the equation on the right. Now I know some of us would prefer if letters stayed out of the equations, but this is a great way to explain what we mean by operator precedence, or PEMDAS. In our example, if x equals 2, y equals 3, and z equals 4, then we see how we get different answers between these two expressions. We see how inserting that parenthetical makes a difference in the total for each expression. Let's take that and move to an example of measure logic to show how PEMDAS can work. In definition one, we have a series of Boolean expressions connected using AND statements. In definition one, if criteria E is true, then the definition is true. We can take that same definition and add in a parenthetical statement as shown here. In this instance, if criteria E is true, then definition two would be true if A, B, and C are also true. Unlike definition one, criteria D does not have to be true because of the use of parentheses. Let's look at an example in current measure logic. For 2024 reporting year, CMS 986 Global Malnutrition Score is a new hospital measure that assesses the percentage of hospitalizations for adults aged 65 years and older who received optimal malnutrition care during the current inpatient hospitalization where care performed was appropriate to the patient's level of malnutrition risk and severity. Specifically, we're gonna look at population six and the measure observation statement, which is population six total malnutrition composite score as percentage calculations. For each hospitalization, population criteria six represents the sum of performed measure observations one, two, three, and four, divided by the number of clinically eligible denominators. For the reporting facility, the population criteria six, aggregate operator average, averages the performance of each total malnutrition composite score as a percentage across all eligible hospitalizations during the measurement period. So as we can see in that narrative statement, we want the sum, the performed measure observations, divided by the number of clinically eligible denominators. When we look at the CQL logic, we see that inside the parentheses are two definition statements that define Population criteria six represents the sum of performed measure observations one, two, three, and four, and the number of clinically eligible denominators. These two statements are divided and then multiplied by 100 to achieve the score. In addition to using PEMDAS for calculations, measures can ensure consistent and predictable behavior in the order of operations within CQL expressions using parentheses around a grouping to enforce higher precedence. In CMS 125 breast cancer screening, parentheses are used to promote operator precedence when looking for mastectomy diagnoses and procedures. If we look at the denominator exclusions logic, we can see the parentheses are used to enforce the order the logic will be reviewed. For example, after the logic evaluates the hospice statement and doesn't find data for it, the next OR statement is to look for right mastectomy procedure or diagnosis. By using a parenthesis, the logic will look first for the right mastectomy procedure or diagnosis. If one is found, 
then the left mastectomy procedure or diagnosis will be evaluated. If one is found, that patient will be included in the denominator exclusions. If one is not found, the logic will move to the next line, which is looking for bilateral mastectomy diagnosis and so forth. That concludes today's presentation. You now have a better understanding of operative precedents in CQL. We hope you've enjoyed this latest installment of the Teach Me CQL series.